lesson, we're going to finish our study in Chapter 1 by talking about combinations with repetition. So we already know from our study in permutations that if we have n distinct objects and we're arranging them in size k, we can do that in n to the k ways. So again, that's when order matters. What we want to look at now, obviously, is still combinations. Combinations is where order does not matter. So for instance, let's say I have three different buckets, but I have five pennies that are essentially the same. I want to look at how many ways I can distribute the pennies. So if order made a difference, if they all were a different year or a different type of coin, well, that would be three to the fifth ways. But because order doesn't matter, they're all just pennies, then we're going to look at it first from the point of view of the buckets. So here's my three buckets. One, two, three. So essentially there are 21 ways. So one way is for me to put all five in bucket one and not put anything in buckets two or three. Or put all five in bucket two or put all five in bucket three. And then you can see I just sort of systematically went through and said, okay, I could do four in bucket one and then put the other in bucket two or four in bucket one and put the other in bucket three, etc. I continued going through all of the different options using four and one and then two and three and then two and two and one, etc. But obviously there's a lot of ways to make a mistake here. So let's talk about a better way to do this. So same exact question, I want to look at another way to display it. Knowing that our solution is 21, let's look at it in another way. I'm focusing now on the column to the right. The column to the right, of course, the second column just says this is where the pennies will go. So penny one goes in one, penny two goes in one, penny three goes in one, etc. But what I really want to focus on is this would be all five coins in bucket one and then essentially two dividers that I'm not really using. Or all five in bucket two and really two dividers that I'm not using or all five in bucket three. So you can see I'm following the same pattern that I did on the other screen when I'm using five or four and one or four and one or one and four, etc. So again, essentially what I'm doing is I'm permutating seven objects because even though there are eight buckets and five pennies, I essentially have five pennies and I have two dividers. Obviously, I don't need three dividers. If I'm dividing into three different things, I only need two dividers. So this would give me an idea that bucket one has four, bucket two doesn't have any, and bucket three has one. So you get the idea of how my little key works over on the right. So a mathematical way to write that, we would say that I have seven objects and I have a group of two things that are identical, two identical dividers, and a group of five things that are identical, five identical pennies. Again, I want to make this so that I can just use the five and the three that I'm given in the question. So let's take a look at how we might do that. Again, I'm using a different no notation here. And my notation is instead of just using the original parentheses, now I've got parentheses around parentheses. And this is called combinations with repetition. And essentially we're saying now if I have k of n distinct objects, we're looking at k objects, which I used C for the coin, and n minus 1 dividers. So in our example, and notice how we're going to write this, so n, before I get to our example, n choose k with repetition tells me to take n plus k and subtract 1, which makes sense because before we had 3 and 5 and we actually used 7 in the numerator. And that's again what I'm going to do. So n plus k minus 1. And the denominator is k factorial and n minus 1 factorial. So I'm either writing it like n plus k minus 1 over k or n plus k minus 1 over n minus 1. Either way is going to give me what I want. So 3 choose 5. Again, I could write this as a normal 
combinations, a normal binomial coefficient of 3 plus 5 minus 1 over 5, which would be 7 over 5. And that's what I have found here is 7 over 5, because 7 over 5 tells me that I'm going to take 7 factorial, let me move my arrow, 7 factorial over 5 factorial, 2 factorial. So essentially that's what I've done. So I didn't show that here in this work, but essentially 3 choose 5 in our combinations with repetition is the same as 7 choose 5. Let's look at another example. Now this one's a little bit different. I'm not using coins and buckets. I'm using kids and ice cream. So if you'll notice, I have three flavors of ice cream, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry. Those are all different. And I've got five children whom we can assume are all different. And the question is how many different ice cream orders are possible? So even though I have different flavors of ice cream and different children, essentially what I'm looking at is I'm looking at a bucket of vanilla if you can imagine putting kids in buckets in a very non-awful way. So we're looking at the flavors kind of like the buckets and we're saying we have five kids so which bucket are those five kids going to go into? So it's really, if you'll notice, the same question. We don't care which child orders which flavor, we're just going to use the same setup where I've got three things that are unique, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, I've got five items to put into them, which still gives me the seven choose five, which came from three plus five minus one over five, because again, that was choosing n plus k minus one over k, which is what we get. And we still get 21, which was our same answer as before. So hopefully you can see how the coins and the buckets and the kids with the flavors are the same. Let's make this just a little bit harder now though because combinations with repetition is, you know, can be difficult, but then they give us a question like this where it makes us kind of question, can we still use this? We have three flavors of ice cream, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry. There are five children who get to choose their own flavor, but every flavor must be used at least once. How many different ice cream orders are possible? So let's think about this. Again, I'm going to use my buckets example. Just imagine putting the kid's name in a bucket. You don't have to imagine putting a kid in a bucket. Vanilla, chocolate, strawberry. I've got five kids. That guy's crooked. I have never claimed to be an artist. If each one has to be used at least once, then I'm going to assign a kid to each flavor. So now that each kit has been used at least once, I now have two children left over and those two kids get to pick whatever they want because I only care that now each of the three have been taken. One has vanilla, one has chocolate, one has strawberry. So now I still have the three buckets, but I only have two to choose. So three plus two minus one over two or four choose two, which is six ways. So again, it could be vanilla chocolate, vanilla strawberry, chocolate strawberry for one and two, and then switch those around, which gives us the six. Let's now look at a combinations with repetition example using linear equations. And I'm just gonna say that you're gonna want to really pay attention to this. We're going to get um, linear equations examples throughout the course, and they will get more difficult. We'll look at different ways in which to do this. What I want you to do is look at the question. So don't look at the answer yet. We're saying I've got three integers and they have to add to seven. So obviously I could go through and say one plus one plus five is seven and one plus two plus four is seven. And, and we could put them all um, for x1, x2, x3. We know what a tedious process that might be. So instead, Let's think about it in our combinations with repetition question. We have three distinct containers. That's this guy, this guy, and this guy. Three containers. We're putting seven objects, and each object is, say, a digit, like one. So I'm putting one here, and one here, and one here, 
and obviously I need all of those ones to add up to seven. That's where we get the seven identical objects. So the easiest way to do this then is to say the combinations with repetition three choose seven, which is actually nine choose seven. Again, you can also think about that with the dividers of seven things and two dividers, so nine total things. You get the idea. Either way, I'm going to end up with nine choose seven or nine choose two, which are identical. So again, if I was finding the solution, that would be nine factorial over seven factorial, two factorial, and I'll leave you to do the rest of the math on that one. Let's look at a very similar example to what we just did. However, this is going to sort of bring us back to the ice cream example where each child or each flavor had to be chosen. So again, we're determining the number of integer solutions to the equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 7, but they're saying essentially you can't use 0. So it can't be 0 plus 0 plus 7. That's not going to work. Everything has to be at least 1. So I need to account for that in my equation. So just like I did before, if I have 7 objects, 4, 5, 6, 7, I have to assign 1 to each group, which means there are four left over. So four objects distributed to the three containers, because I already had to distribute one, gives me, and notice the way that I'm going to write this, x1 prime plus x2 prime plus x3 prime equals four. And what that means is, essentially, I took one away from here, one away from here, one away from here, and three away from, oops, just kidding. That means I took one away from here, one here, one here, and three away from here. And that gave me x1 prime plus x2 prime plus x3 prime equals four. So essentially I already had to assign those ones and then I subtracted them to make it work out on each side. So that means my solution is six choose four or six choose two, or obviously the way I would write it here. That would tell me that it's six factorial over four factorial, two factorial, which would be 30 over two or 15. Again, you can always look at it that there are six places between each of the seven objects in which to put our two dividers, whichever way makes it make sense to you in your head, but you'll wanna show that you're using that combinations with repetition um, notation. So I'm going to end this video with two different questions, actually three, two slides of three questions for you to try. So this one, I feel pretty confident you can get this one done on your own because this is very similar to the one we just did. This time, as you can see, I've made some changes. I've said x1 has to be 1, x2 has to be 2, x3 has to be 3 or more. And that's going to change then how many objects I have left to distribute. So press pause on your video, try this question all the way through. When you are done, press play to see how you did. So just like we did on the last one, I'm essentially saying that I've got 10 things. One of them is going to go here for sure, maybe more. Two are going to go here and three are going to go here. So I have to take six away from the 10 because that's how many now that I'll have left to distribute is just four. So that gives me my new equation that x1 prime plus x2 prime plus x3 prime is equal to four because I had to take away the one, two, and three that were already assigned based on the constraints of the problem. So now I still have my three distinct containers and I only have four objects left to permutate or to spread out to the different buckets. So that's combinations with repetition, three choose four, which is six choose four or six choose two, which is 15. So hopefully you did okay on that one. So here's our last practice. This is a two-parter. So President Hawkins, who is the current president at Bellevue University, has five vice presidents, or did at the time that I created the slideshow. Um, these have changed a little bit but Davis, Barnes, Hewlett, Blasig, Groshen were the five vice presidents at the time. Let's say she's got a $30,000 bonus that she wants to distribute to these five people. And the checks have to be for a multiple of 1,000. 
just to make it a little bit simpler. So what we want to do is A, find the number of possible ways she can distribute the money, including the possibility that one or more vice president doesn't receive money. I can tell you which one shouldn't receive money. And two, if she wants every vice president to receive at least 1,000, how many ways can she distribute the money? So again, do your best, press pause, try both questions, thinking again that question two here is going to be similar to the every bucket gets a penny or every flavor gets a child situation. Once you're ready, press play to see how you did. So again, what I'm dealing with is $30,000, but it has to be in multiples of 1,000. So really, I've got 30 things that I'm distributing to five buckets. That's what I'm dealing with. So five choose 30, which means 34 choose 30, which gives me quite a few different combinations. But again, the 30 came from essentially 30,000 divided by 1,000 because they had to be multiples of 1,000. If I want every vice president to receive at least $1,000, then again, we're going to think about those 30 items now being 25 items because I've already distributed five of the $1,000 increments to those five people. So now I have five choose 25 instead which is 29 choose 25, which is 23,751 combinations.